chance in this examination. Either you can do it or you can't. And if you cheat, you cheat only yourself. I'm soaking. <laughs> I didn't wet myself. <laughs> well done. Another fully trained pilot. Very good. The five junior officers, now two months into their flying training, have all come through their solos. At the last moment, there were doubts about Trevor Lewis, who needed three hours of extra instruction. But now, to everyone's relief, he too has flown solo. Lewis went solo uh, on the 5th of June uh, and after his next sortie he should have gone solo again but he wasn't fit so his instructor repeated the sortie and expected him to go solo after that but he wasn't fit again so we repeated the exercise a third time and he still didn't regain a safe solo standard so at that stage, I discussed his progress with the flight commander and asked the flight commander to fly him outside the circuit, in other words, to give him a change of air, change of scenery, in the hope that this would uh, do the trick. The flight commander flew that trip with him last Friday uh, and at the end of it reported that he wasn't any further forward. While some of his flying was satisfactory, he was basically unable to land the aeroplane. So at that stage, I said that it was time that I flew with him. And what I intended to do with him was to get him to do all the checks, to taxi out, take off, take me down to the relief landing ground and fly a series of circuits. And ideally, I wanted him to fly me three circuits during which I didn't have to take control. And if those three circuits were satisfactory, uh, I would then get out of the aeroplane and send him off to do his three quarters of an hour solo and I would watch him from the tower. However, if uh, at the end of or at the end of three or four circuits he wasn't safe, then the plan is to continue the sortie and try and solve his landing problem if necessary, taking up the full hour. And if towards the end of the trip he becomes fit for solo, um, then he'll be sent solo. On the other hand, if we have to use up the whole hour and at the end of it he's not fit solo, then I'll have to decide whether to fly him again or whether to recommend that he is uh, suspended. Looks OK. There you go, check the end float on the... Flap. Yeah, I don't know what that is. What's that for? It's just an inspection hole. Is it? Yes. And then check underneath again, it's pinned, which is a little bit warm, as I said. The first and, student uh, to go on review was, right, was so Trevor Lewis. He took rather longer okay. than we hoped for to go solo. Um, it took 
three extra sorties for him to reach a solo standard. To start with, we accept the fact that anyone can have an off day, and so we're not too worried if a student has one bad trip. If, on the other hand, he goes on having trouble and seems to be slower than what is required for the, to meet the course standard, the student will then probably go on review. Now, the review procedure is a formalised procedure which brings the attention of the squadron commander and the station commander uh, through the uh, chief instructor that the student is a bit slow, or maybe very slow, but certainly he is not meeting the course standards. It is also thereby brought to the student's attention that he needs some special attention. Being on review has a nasty stigma, nasty connotations, because everybody who does fail the course has at some stage been on review. And the student usually is aware of the fact that he is finding it difficult. He sees his colleagues going ahead of him. Um, he knows he's on review. And he can get rather dejected and think that we got the axe out and we're sharpening it to chop him. However, we're still hoping that with uh, sort of regular flying with an experienced instructor, he will get over this little hurdle, which at the moment is purely the hurdle of landing the aircraft. Um, and when he gets, should he get over that hurdle without any problem, then he will continue, and providing he makes adequate process, uh, progress over the next well, 10 sorties, then he will come off review. We all want to help him, but you don't, as I say, you can't walk up to the guy and say, hey, Trev, what's your problem? You've got to wait until you're talking about things, until he comes out and says, uh, what, what he's having trouble with, so that you can just have a chat with him and try and help, really. I mean, not that we know any more than he does, but chatting certainly helps. I can land at odd times very well, but a lot of the time I'm landing unsafely, really. I wasn't using the wrong technique, basically. I know exactly what I'm doing wrong. I perceive the things I'm doing wrong. I know when I'm high or low, but I'm not going to lie the wrong way. I know what to do. I'm saying uh, put more power on or delay flap and get back on the glide path. But the problem there is um, actually doing it. At the moment, I have problems actually like moving my hands. It's just, it's just me, really. It's up to me to sort it out. I've had a lot of instruction and a lot of extra time now to sort it out. I can do it, but I've got to prove I can do it again consistently. And I've got to progress at the required rate, because at the moment, I'm not. It boils down, really, to what they would call the uh, uh, piece of string syndrome. You pretend there's a piece of string or a pair of gloves around your arms, like you have a new kid. And as you pull one, the other glove moves in the opposite direction, so... As you put the power on, you need to pull the nose up to keep the speed the same. And as you, if you say you're too high, you want to take a little bit of power off to, to increase the rate of descent, but at the same time, you get the same speed, so you've got to lower the nose forward a little bit. And that's where the problem is. But even more than that, really, another problem I'm having as well, as I come into the finals turn, I need to set an angle of bank. 30 degrees is, is the ideal. Hold it and hold 30 degrees, three quarters way around, decide, or third, three quarters way around. Do I know how much bank I'm going to need to get them lined up the runway? So as I come round, I come I look at the runway and say, yes, I'm going to make it. I just want to start reducing the bank off now. It's almost like looking to a goldfish bowl, trying to judge where our father goldfish is down, because it's not really just a simple case of saying how far a wall's away. We're doing about 100 miles an hour when you come to land. It's like going down a one in eight hill. And then 30 feet from the ground, you can look at the aircraft nose up. Instead of pulling down at the ground like a bullet, you've got to get it up. As you get to the right position, and you know you've got it right, it's when the runway seems to go rush up round your ears and over your head. I know I can do it. The question is why I can do it at this moment in time, as they say. My witching hour has come. <laughs> Trevor Lewis is a puzzling case. He flies with confident control until he hits that last 300 feet. Because Lewis's problem is causing anxiety at higher levels, he must now take a check ride with the squadron commander himself. He believes he can sort out his problem given time, but flying time is strictly rationed. At 400 pounds an hour, it has to be, and he's fast using up his allowance. Well, no, I'm quite concerned. I think we all sort of very concerned because they're again a, a, a peculiar situation where everybody knows that the guy's having a problem and yet you're not going to walk up to him and say you know what's your what's your trouble you, you've got you have to be very 
obviously very tactful. Um, when you walk through that door into the crew room, it's very easy to tell if you've had a good trip or a bad trip with most people. Uh, there's not many people who can hide if they've done something really badly. And if you have done something really badly and you walk in with your jaw dragging on the floor, thinking that you know, next week you're going to start being a navigator or something, you know, because it could all happen in three or four days, um, you, you tend to sit down and discuss it, which is, which is great, because you suddenly find that somebody else did the same thing as you did yesterday maybe worse than you did yesterday, so you immediately feel a bit better. And you learn so much, because even if you haven't made the mistake that that person has, if you're aware that that sort of mistake can be made, then you can put it right. But the thing with Trevor, um, as I say, is, 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 is very difficult. He's had, I think, three or four attempts at one particular exercise. It's very gratifying to, to, to see that so much effort is being taken to try and get him through the exercise. That's the encouraging thing for all of us, and we keep talking about that as well. It's marvellous, you know. Everybody's always talking about the chop rate and everything, and everybody knows that the likelihood of everybody, or every one of us, getting through right to the very end is very slim. So sometime or other, somebody's got to go somewhere, presumably. Uh, we'd be very lucky if we all got through. That doesn't make the fact that, especially Trevor, from our point of view, because we know him before we came here, we've known him for so long, uh, the fact that there's a chance that that might be happening to him is, is rather difficult to grasp, really. While Trevor Lewis fights against time, John McRae has also run into a bumpy patch. Yes, He's I just do. failed his elementary handling test. I like flying. I like being up there, and I like it when everything's going right. But, you know, quite often now, things are not always going right, so um, then you begin to wonder. And when you're on the ground, you're thinking about, oh, I wish I'd done this, I wish I'd done that. Um, and you resolve to do better next time, but next time you, you can't, you're not allowed just to improve the things that you made, you did wrong last time. Something new is introduced again, and you're supposed to be able to do the things you've done before. So, although I do enjoy it, the strain is definitely telling on me. You know, I've, I find that I'm not quite as um, jovial of a person as I used to be, perhaps. You know, so uh, sometimes I am. Sometimes I get bursts of humour, but not that often now. He's down in the dumps, he's as miserable as sin. His girlfriend's just finished with him. Life's really going well for him at present. You know, his mental attitude, is that's why he's failed. What in particular did you do in the fire ant checks? The thing that takes the time. Correct the instruments. Hmm. Yes, you erected the instruments. What was our fuel state? Fairly low. We it were was fairly low, back. yes. Which direction were we heading when you were erecting the instruments? The wrong direction. The wrong direction. The so for every minute we went that way, we had to spend two minutes going the other way. way. The only thing I did think was the fact that I wanted to go below the cloud and we weren't. Mm -hmm. Had I gone in the right direction, I thought we might go above cloud and then have trouble getting below it. But well, as you can see, yeah, not a lot of cloud, cloud, is there? Yes. You should have aimed the aeroplane in the right direction and then done your checks and erected your instruments. Right. And if you then needed radar assistance to get down, well, you could have called for it. Yes. As indeed you did hmm. later on when you got down, it was a bit murky. Well, I stopped that because we could see the ground and I wanted you to recover visually. Yeah. So perhaps a little more spirit wouldn't yes. go amiss in your, in your flying. Hmm. Well, that's all I've got to say on the trip, unless you've got any questions. No, sir, I haven't. Am I criticise you unfairly? No, no, sir. All right, fair enough. I'm beginning to wonder, though, the, the number of people that seem to be having trouble. I'm not sure whether that is a normal thing at this stage of the course. I hope it is, because if it isn't, it means either that the whole course, or nearly all the course, are below average, which I can't really see, or that the training we're getting is not quite up to scratch. I wouldn't infer that it was, but I just wonder about that sometimes. But um, I can't see any reason for it. Trevor Lewis is taxiing towards the moment he's been dreading. His squadron commander, Robbie Chambers, has sweated over the controls with him for five extra hours. Now he'll hear his verdict. You don't seem to appreciate just where we are in relation to the ground. That's why on Several of the landings, we were just coming down the glide slope 
and bang, you're just hitting the ground. No attempt to check the rate of descent. And then you put too much power on, so the speed would increase, and then we'd end up with one of these sort of very, very flat approaches with power on, we'd hit the ground, you'd forget to close the throttle. In other words, a, a real sort of rag bag of things that were not right in the landing phase. Many times on the left-hand side of the runway, and I left you as far as I could. No, I appreciate that. Because you won't learn. If I'm flying the aeroplane, you're, you're going to learn more by doing it yourself at that stage. And I left you as long as I could and as often as I could, even when we were very close to the side of the runway. And then, of course, two or three times, you snatched at the stick and we became airborne prematurely. And then on one of them, you pushed the stick forward and down we went and up and get and down. And really, it's uh, not what we're after. And finally, on the runway itself, we were getting into problems with directional control. Remember, we were shifting over to the left and then we were going to the right. And If it had been a one-off, I'd say, well, fair enough, I think we can overcome that. But you've got a bit of a history of problems in the landing phase that goes back many trips. And your instructor, Flight Lieutenant Withers, I know has felt you could do it, and he carried on and carried on until in the end he said, well, I've run out of ideas. I can't think of, of any other way of trying to get you to do it right. Which is why, uh, obviously, why you went on review, because we wanted to concentrate on you and make sure you had lots of continuity. If there had been any discernible improvement in the landing, I would be quite prepared to carry on. But this sort of rag bag of errors continued, and you not really appreciating what it was that was going wrong. And that's why, Trevor, I, you know, I honestly think that we've, we've got to stop. Now, it's not my decision, OK? It's up to the chief instructor. I, I've explained to you that I think, really, that we've got to stop. If we had unlimited hours, we could probably overcome this problem, but it would only reappear in 10 or 20 hours' time at the next phase, probably instrument flying. As I say, it's not my decision. I will make the recommendation, I'm afraid, that I think we must stop. And that's what I'll tell the chief instructor. And he will fly with you and decide for himself. And he will make the decision. Now, I don't want you to think that uh, it's a foregone conclusion. He will fly with you and he will look at you with a completely open mind. If you turn in a good trip with him, he'll send you solo. And that'll be the end of it. And if he does that, we'll certainly do our best to continue. You know, you can be sure of that. Because we're not here to tell people they can't fly. We're here to train pilots. And we take that very seriously. But having said that, if he does fly with you and feels the same way that I do, then I'm afraid that's it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Trevor. Happy birthday to you. Oh, you're 20. 21 today. He's never been 21 before. <laughs> <laughs> 21 today. Happy birthday, dear Trevor. Happy birthday Hooray! I'm not in the bumps yet. <laughs> 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 but now, the second surprise, he says. I was only a few of you know about it, but we've got an important answer to make, haven't we? <laughs> Support. Now, Barbara and I are also today decided to engage you, see? Oh, dear. Ladies, ever come here, Barbara? <laughs> <laughs> Now where's all the presents? <laughs> <laughs> no, when you give him the give presents. It. You go and give it to him. Oh, no, that's Trevor. Right. Right. No, no, he's going to give them all. I know. I always knew he wanted to fly. I'm not going to say I wanted him to fly, because I didn't. But I want it if he wants it. But just, just remember, I'm his mother. I just want him to be safe and happy. Just, I just want him to do what he wants to do. Hey, Trevor. Hey, competitive.
Yes, it is competitive. I realise that. Very Most competitive. Most people that start actually don't end. No, I realise that, and I just hope that if well, what I think of that, I just hope if that happens to Trevor, that he can take it. I just hope he realises that you know that everybody can't finish, and I just hope that it won't make him you know too unhappy. And I just hope that he can be happy in some other field. Yes, yes, I do understand that. I don't always say that to Trevor. No, no, I don't uh, always express what I feel. We're now going to propose a toast to Trevor on the, this happy event and on his 21st birthday, whichever you think is the most important. Right, Jolly Goodell's Trevor and Barbara. And may you be very happy. Oh, oh Mark. I'll we'll give you our own Can you also have your own? What's the morale of the course like at the moment? Um, morale wasn't brilliant. And I think morale is going to be a lot worse now that, that we've um, had this carrot of two weeks' holiday. Um, held in front of us two weeks holiday after LSE, his ship survival exercise, which we've got next week. Um, and now that seems to have been withdrawn from most people. I don't think I will get any leave now. Um, I was told about that at the beginning of the course. They said you may well not get leave, but the fact was that we were almost promised two weeks. And then I was, I think myself, I was assured that I'd get one week at least. And now it seems that I won't get any, you know. And to, to be offered leave and then have it taken away is worse than not than knowing all the time that you're not going to get leave. So, I don't know. I'm really looking forward to LSE, to be quite honest, just for a holiday. It'd be great to get out in the hills. I know it's going to be hard work. We'll probably get wet and cold and I'll be moaning as much as anybody up there, but I'll be enjoying it. But anybody, you know, just because I'm away from flying for a week and I need that time to, to think about what's happening and think about all the things I've been taught, you know. I think you need a break. What's LSE stand for? Leadership Survival Exercise. Um, they just basically take us into the hills and dump us there for four days and see what happens. What we're going to do today is concentrate on procuring and uh, thinking about eating game today. And for this object, we've got chicken for you. There are about four methods you can use for killing it. You can... Monday morning, and Trevor Lewis flies through a cloudless sky. He's engaged, he's 21, and his future as a flying officer will be decided in the next 60 minutes. This last chance flight for a struggling pilot is known ominously as the chop ride. In the provost with him is the chief instructor, who must pass final judgment. Right, let's go through the important parts of the sortie then. The basic aspects, checks, taxiing and all that, that's fine. Take off. That was acceptable, quite safe. Into the circuit itself. The discouraging thing, really, is that most aspects of the circuit you're doing are absolutely fine. The takeoff, the initial climb, the clean up, the checks after takeoff are okay. The turn onto the downwind leg is fine. Where we went wrong was once you'd actually rolled the wings level, you had the height right. Perspective looked good, the speed was okay, and the aircraft was in trim. Now, over those last few hundred feet, about the last 300, 400 feet, that's when the problem appeared and we never could resolve it. When you put the flaps down consistently, despite the fact that we 
flew a good number of circuits, and I flew through three circuits and talked you through them, in fact, to show you what, exactly what I was doing as I did them. As the flaps went down, you were consistently allowing the nose to drop. So the approach, the aircraft started to go below the ideal descent path. And that required you then to raise the nose to make good threshold. In other words, there was a tendency to undershoot. However, towards the end, we were even starting to resolve that problem. And the latter, the last three or four circuits were acceptable in that sense. But the problem we never did resolve was actually touching down. Again, we talked about three circuits through to show you exactly at what point I stopped looking at the piano keys, at the numbers, at the threshold numbers, and looked up, down the runway, to flare the aircraft. And it's that point which you were failing to achieve each time. Most of the time, you flared too late, and I actually had to pull back on the control column to stop us making a heavy landing. On two occasions, you actually flared just about in time, but you raised the nose too high, and we actually ballooned. And again, unfortunately, I had to take control. So, regretfully, um, I have to recommend at this stage that we stop training, that you stop your flying training. We fail to overcome this problem, but I don't think we ever will. Have you got any points you wish to raise? Yeah, no, yes, sir. No? Okay, thanks a lot. On June 21st, 1979, after just 25 hours of flying time, Trevor Lewis was grounded.